morning, everybody. Let me put my do not disturb on here because you know I will be disturbed, right? You know I will. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody had a great long weekend. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Shauna. How is everybody? How are you doing? Love this. Hi, Andrea. Just saw you there. Angela. Hello, 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 Gwenda. For all of you who may be new to this, this is just a uh, devotional thing I do every Tuesday morning. Um, so if you're here and you want to stick around, glad to have you. Don't pay attention to all this. It's Tuesday and today's a, oh, today's an extra huge day for me. Normally, um, it's like a catch-up day, an email day for my team and all of that. But because of the holiday, I have um, I have to meet a couple of customers today. I have to uh, have my team meeting tonight. And then we have our Onward get-together and Onward no matter what. So <clears throat> I am swamped today, but it's okay. I, I am very happy with it all. Let me see if I can move this so this isn't quite so bad. There we go. Okay, so so thank you. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, my niece and her son, Jen and Chad, uh, were able to come down uh, over this past weekend, the holiday weekend, which was nice. I had to work all day Saturday, um, but Chad went with us, so we got to spend like 11 hours with Chad, which was really cool. And then yesterday, uh, it's never really busy with dashing on a holiday like Sunday, so we were able to spend the day with Jen and uh, watch some movies. I don't know if you guys have watched that movie. Uh, oh, Chad will kill me for forgetting it. Um, Purple Hearts. Uh, very good. It was on Netflix, I think, so that was really good. We watched that, so that was a good time, and then I fixed some... Um, really good grilled steaks and we made a steak salad with my homemade blue cheese dressing and some ranch dressing so it was a good time I don't get a lot of time off but it was nice to take a day and uh yeah Angela hey 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 Chanel how are you good to see you um and we just do this you know sometimes things happen look I just said I had a I had a really good weekend right I was able to work so I was able to make some money um, I got two more customers. My customers have been coming in twos for Avon lately, so I'm loving that. Um, was able to do that. Uh, was able to leave some brochures and things places. Um, but I also was able to spend a little time with family because I've really, really been missing my family. My boys, of course, I really miss them, but I'm going to see them in October, so I'm looking forward to that. But, um... I know sometimes not everybody has a great weekend when other people are celebrating great weekends and get-togethers. And I am learning as life changes, you have to be grateful for the small stuff. You know, I, I look at it this way. I believe there was a time in my life that when I couldn't spend all that time with them that they were down here. Um, that I would have had a bad attitude during the majority of it because I couldn't, right? And I have learned that you really need to appreciate the time that you're given. You really need to, if you get two hours with somebody, quit thinking that's not enough. If somebody comes and they can visit you for an hour and you can get that time in, love on that time, right? And and sometimes life shifts and sometimes people don't understand that life shifts and you may not have the freedom that you used to have because something in your life has changed. Maybe you've lost an income. Um, maybe uh, uh, your, your hours have been cut. Maybe you've acquired new bills that you didn't have before, medical bills or, um, you know, kids going to college and things like that. All of that is part of life. I'm going to tell you right now, it does you no good to get angry at it. Okay, so stop with the anger. That just ages you. And then you've got to deal with me and you got to buy some awesome skincare, right? In order to deal with the aging that you give yourself. Uh, just find something good in all of it. Find something good in all of it. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes you have to dig deep. You do. Sometimes you got to really get in there and you really got to dig. Um, but you also, this is what my mom used to tell me, make the most of every moment. You know, 
when I'm out there doing a side hustle, I could say I really hate that I have to do this side hustle. I really help hate that this bill is in my life. So, you know, now I have to do this or that or whatever that may be, right? But what I've learned is how can where I am be used to benefit what I want to do or what I am doing? How can I use it to not only make my business grow, to but to make my life better, to make my business uh, more successful, to connect with more people. Um, and when I find that when my attitude shifts to how am I going to make this work really well for me, I find that it does. And a lot of times it's me just stopping for a moment and going, okay, Lord, you know I have a bad attitude, right? I don't even got to tell you, but I'm going to tell you, I got a bad attitude right now in case I'm hiding it really well. And I need some help. Show me. Show me how I can make a difference today. Show me. Give me something to share with my Avon family, with the followers, the people who follow me. Show me what I can, what I can give them as far as my takeaway from something that I could have viewed as just miserable, as just plain bad, as there's nothing in it, right? So, um, yeah, so I hope that that helps. I'm going to, who else is, hold on, I'm sitting here. I bought a homeless fat breakfast this morning. Angela, that's so cool. I, stuff like that, I just love it. Good morning, Rosemary. Hi, Britta, how are you, dear? Uh, Charlene, hello. Hello, how are you, dear? Yeah, I got a little positive. This will be the morning, Charlene, for sure. Um, <clears throat> Karen, you're right. As life changes, you need to change with it, for sure. Hi, Randy. Good morning, good morning. Britta says, I picked up a part-time job to go with my full-time job and everything else I'm doing. I just need a little more. Deal. Britta, it's going to come. You keep those eyes open. Front, back. Jesus is there. He's going to bring you to the right door. I've been telling you that. He's going to bring you to the right place. It's going to come. I'm not promising you it's going to be easy, but it, you're, you're going to get there. Don't give up. Don't give up on you and don't give up on where you want to be. Okay? You just keep pressing. Okay? That, that's what I do every single day, sister. Okay, let's see. Uh, if there's something else before we get started this morning, this keeps moving. Hello, Paula. How are you, my dear friend? Good to see you. Um, okay, so, so let's jump into the devotional, okay? It's 1015. I know if you're like me, you got a lot to do too. And again, the devil was working this morning because I thought, I have so much to do. Do I really take time? And I thought, no, I need to take time. I need to take time because I committed that I would do this for anybody who wanted to be a part of this. I committed that I would do this, so I'm doing it. And I'm going to bring this up real quick. Hold on. I want to bring this up on my... Here we go. Hold on. Let me see if I can bring this up. Okay, yes, I can, so that I can say... Um, I don't know, Britta, if it's wisdom, sister, but I will tell you this. It's definitely life. The one thing that God has given me to share with everybody is life, business, ups, downs, everything in between. Love, hate, friendships, people who I thought were friends or not friends, you know, learning people. But it's not so much finding out there are people like that. It's, it's finding out that... Even in those situations, those situations can be used towards making you a better person. That's what it can be used as. And it can be make me wiser in my choosing in the future, right? And it also can, sometimes somebody starts out as not your friend. Maybe they are kind of using you. Maybe they are kind of, you don't know what's going on. But then in the end, it can turn into something better according to how you handle it. And never forget that people sometimes are here for a season. Some people are here sometimes to help your growth in the process, right? And some people are, are in this for a lifetime and they're with you for a long time. So just never, never, never forget that, okay? Just, just keep hanging, sister. That's what you have to do. So... <clears throat> 
normally I go through in the last year and I find devotions that really helped me in the last year when I was going through cancer. You all know that, right? But um, today I opened up my devotion for today, September the 6th, right? And I just thought, mm, okay, I'm going to wait on the one that I had marked. Let's do this one. This is a good one. Um, sometimes when things happen in our life, we really feel alone. And I say we because that's me. That is me. And um, But we're really not. We're never alone. You know, and, and, and even if you're somebody who's like, Molly, I don't even want Jesus in my life. Whatever. Well, I have news for you. He's always there. You may not choose to treat him like he's there. You may treat him like... He is just invisible, like the invisible man. And um, he's all right, because he's hoping that you're going to turn and you're going to realize that you do need him one day. Um, and I hope you do, too. And I hope <clears throat> that it's not through something like I went through. I hope you just decide one day that you want something more in your life and you realize it's not more money. It's not prestige. It's not being famous or popular it's it's not all of that those things can be gone in a minute and what are you left with if you're not okay with you if you're not okay with um with who god is trying to 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 mold you into being which is not somebody else it's your best you i find that even in the business that i'm in in direct sales we watch people so closely and the next thing you know we're trying to duplicate those people or what they're doing and in reality your strong point could be your strong suit could be something that's not even what that person is doing it's okay to follow people it's okay to follow me but you don't want to be me because in order to be me you would have to walk my shoes because I didn't just I just didn't show up as this person. Hi, 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 guys. I see everybody jumping on. Was it, I became who I am through this life. I tell people all the time, if you had met me in 2004 when I first started Avon, there are some things that are the same about me, but there is so much that's not the same. That I have grown through every aspect in my life. I have grown through every loss in my life. I have grown through every difficult stepping, tripping boulder in my business. I have grown through friendships that have come and gone. Friendships that have been strong and maybe they're just steady now. Maybe some are weak now. I have grown through what I have to do. And I wasn't sure I could do it because I didn't know if I was strong enough. Was I too old? Can I do this? Can I not do this? And because of those trials and tribulations in my life, I have figured out so much more that I can do. Um, doing this, live streams. Huh. That was like if you saw me the first time. Uh-oh, 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 no, 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 no. Don't do it. Somebody walked by. Who walked by? Did you see that? I almost lost the screen. Which is okay, but... Well. It's okay. <laughs> okay, we're good. Um, blind guy stuff. <laughs> um, the good thing is, is those things, especially the hardest things, the roughest things, they're the things who make you who you are. Little did I know that during many of those times... I was not alone, but I let myself think I was alone. I was angry with God for a lot of that. And um, luckily he never gave up on me. Lucky he knew that there was more within me that was here for me to share with you. And this is one of the things. And this, of course, came through the cancer scare and the fact that I figured out that what I was raised with, which is almost casting judgment on everybody else who didn't believe how I believed or whatever that was, um, that was not what, what I was meant for. I was meant to love. My mom knew that before anybody else. I was meant to love people no matter where they are in their journey. If you're somebody who doesn't 
<clears throat> believe in yourself. If you're somebody who others have beat you down in your life, if you are somebody who you feel like you have failed at everything, if you are somebody who feels like nobody loves you, you're not pretty enough, you're not skinny enough, you're not any of those things, do you realize with all this that I am or am not, I was meant to be put in your path. Whether you like me or not, we are connected for a reason. I don't know if you know that. But we are connected for a reason. And maybe you've had a time where you were off social media or you haven't talked to me. Or maybe you left Avon and you don't really know why you stayed connected to me, but you did. You stayed, you know, friends with me on social media, whatever that looks like. But you did. And there's a reason for that. I am here for some reason in your life. But get this. You are here for some reason in my life. And I may not know why all of you are in my life, but I guarantee you in ways that maybe I don't know, you have touched me in some way. Maybe you are part of the reason that I still do what I do. And that goes for the haters as well as the lovers because that was a real struggle for me to... to not embrace the 5,000 great comments or the, the great reviews on something and not concentrate on the two really bad ones or the five really bad ones or the people who disagreed. We all do that. I have been fighting that my entire life, not just my Avon career, okay, where I deal with so many more people. I have learned that it is okay for people to think what they want to think about me. It is not up to me to change their mind about me. It is not, it is not up to me to judge them for their path. And if they want to judge me for mine, that's their problem, guys. Stop getting angry at people who you feel like are judging you. Number one, if you put your life out there, be strong to do that. Be strong to do that because as you share your truth, if you think people aren't going to come for you, pff, come on. Who told you that the people were going to get, isn't that just wonderful? That she, you think people aren't coming for me because of this devotion that I started on, on Tuesdays that people say, Molly, keep God out of things. You're going to lose customers if you, if you bring God into things. Well, I, I don't know how to do that because God's in everything I do. <clears throat> but if you don't believe how I believe, why does that mean that we can't be friends? Why does that mean that you can't love me anyways? Why does that mean that I can't love you because you believe different? It shouldn't be that way. Why does it always have to be, I'm right and you're wrong? It doesn't have to be that way. And if it were that way, guess where me and my kids would be right now? Because my kids completely lost their faith amongst things that happened in their life a long time ago. And and I just kept praying that, that God would work in their lives and, and that eventually God would show them where they need to be. But on their own timeline and on and in their own path, on their own path, not my path. See, following social media makes you think that you know, don't you get it, guys? They try to pit us against one another. And, and I get that people, like, they get angry with Christians. They don't want nothing to do with Christians. They don't want nothing to do with church. I need you to know, I get it. Because coming from somebody who was in church for so long, and I am a Christian, but yet I would rather, I would rather define myself as someone who follows Jesus, somebody who loves like Jesus, somebody who knows who the true and almighty God is, than somebody who goes, I go to Baptist church, I go to Presbyterian, I, I, I follow the Catholic religion, I follow this, I do that. That, that those are man-made religions, guys. I'm sorry. And everybody finds a church that suits them. And there's nothing wrong with that. So don't judge me. Well, you can because you're going to, but that's all right. It's okay. But I have chosen that my center 
is Jesus. My center is God. My center is he tells me to do two things. Love him and love you. And he doesn't say only love the ones who agree with you, Molly. And he doesn't say only associate with the ones who believe like you do, Molly. He says love people. And if you are people, I'm going to love you even when it's difficult. I may have to go, Jesus, fix it. Jesus, take the whole car. You all know. You see my hashtags. But all that tells me is, is that you're my challenge for the day. That when you don't comment on here, when uh, you don't follow me, when you unfriend me, whatever this looks like, when you hate it, when you see that Avon uses me for something because you have been so ate up with what you don't like about me, um, when you let those things, God's going to find a way to bring me into your life one way or another. Maybe it's going to be a memory because I feel like He's going to use me. There's a reason I was bought into your life. And I need you to know that too. For these people who you feel like have walked out of your life, don't go try to fix it. Just keep being your best you. But don't let anger and don't let things come into your life. And don't let them make you bitter. Don't let things make you hateful. And don't let things keep you sad. You know? Just, just don't. Um, I just hope that what I'm going to read you, if you feel alone in all this, my son has friends who say, I just don't know what I believe. I want to believe in something, but I don't know what to believe. I don't know what I believe. And I hope that when me sharing these things, that you will understand that even though you may not have found your place yet, that you haven't come to the acknowledgement that Jesus is just, he just did so much for us. He made it to where when you go out and you get it wrong, that he forgives you and he makes it right. That when you fail at something, when you do something that you know is just so wrong, no matter where in your life, that that he, he will cover that and that he will forgive you when you acknowledge your sin. And by the way, there's a whole lot of sin out there going on, right? You know, those little white lies we talk about? He's there for it. But the big thing you do, cheating, leading, lying, stealing, Maybe we've all had that somewhere in our life, right? I can remember the first time I stole something. Matter of fact, I remember it because my mama tore my hiney up. I was just a little thing, but I remember, right? He forgave me for that because I asked him. I asked him to. So, you're not alone. He's always there, even if you don't want to acknowledge that he's there okay so so let me read you the devotion okay and then we will we'll move on here <clears throat> this is from today it really spoke to me the verses that go with this from number 624 it says the lord bless you and keep you in psalm 1830 it says as for god his way is perfect the word of the lord is flawless he is a shield for all who take refuge in him yeah yeah, you know those times when no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you feel so completely lost. Nobody understands. You're crying. You're empty. You're anxious. You just feel like you need to call out. And I learned last year that if you just crawl into the crook of God's arms and you just lay there as his child, and you bask in him and you talk to him and you get in his word that you realize then no matter what happens he will see you through it now don't don't misunderstand that doesn't mean that you're not going to have to go through what you go through right because sometimes what we chose what happens in life that's going to happen but you never have to be alone in god's presence and here's what the devotion says. And again, guys, this is from Jesus Always by Sarah Young. Love her. It says, I broaden the path beneath you so that your ankles do not turn. 
I don't want you to focus overly much on what is ahead of you, wondering whether you'll be able to cope with it. Only I know what your future really holds. Moreover, I am the only one who fully understands what you are capable of. Finally, I can alter your circumstances gradually or dramatically. In fact, I can widen the path you are walking on right now. I want you to realize how in, in I want you to realize how involved in your life I am. I delight in taking care of you, tweaking the situation you are in to spare you from unnecessary hardship. Remember that I am a shield for all who take refuge in me. Your part in this adventurous journey is to trust me, communicate with me, walk with me in steps of joyful dependence. I will not remove all of that adversity from your life. Hear this. I will not remove all adversity from your life, but I will widen the path you are traveling on to to bless you and keep you from harm. Man, that is, I, I mean, what did you get from that? For me, I'm looking at this going, I love the fact that she uses tweaking. I delight in taking care of you, tweaking the situation you are in to spare you from unnecessary hardship. He didn't say from all hardship. He said from unnecessary hardship. Your part in this journey is to trust me, communicate with me, and walk with me. I will not remove all adversity from your life, but I will widen the path that you are traveling on. Man, I just, don't we wish sometimes that he would just say, okay, you're my child, and I'm just going to remove this from you. For all of you who are really following me for one reason or the other, Sometimes, matter of fact, most of the time, I realize that the reason you follow me is because you have followed, you have invested in my hardships as well as my successes. I think you relate very much to my hardships and things that I have gone through in my life. So much I still haven't shared, but so much that I have shared. And so many people in my life, including my husband for the longest time, never understood why I would share things, my hardships like that, and be so raw and, and bold about how I was feeling and where I was in that hardship. And, and I said, because nobody wants to hear somebody who just gets it right all the time. If all I shared was the the things that were perfect, the things that lined up, the trips that I won that were awesome, the, the fact that when I did earn something, oh, only sharing the great stuff. No, all, it was hard. And there were times I thought I wouldn't. And by the way, there were times I didn't. There were times when I put goals in front of me that I did not, did not in any way meet them. And I had to readjust. I thought, oh, I can't believe where I am. Why am I not closer to this goal? Why is this not coming together for me? I'm putting all this work into my marriage. Why are we still having friction? I, I couldn't love my sons anymore. Why don't they understand what I'm saying on some things? Oh, you don't understand that, that when you get through, you know that whole hindsight is 2020. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I wouldn't be who I am. Hey, Chad, I was just talking about you. Um, I wouldn't be where I am without those hardships. I wouldn't be where I am to be able to c communicate with my customers, to deal with the ones who are a real pain in the tushy, to try to bring joy to people who look like they've had the most miserable day in the world. You know, Chad was door dashing with me on Saturday, and he gets a real kick out of me because um, 
everywhere we go, right, we're like talking. And matter of fact, he's a lot like me in a way. My niece was with me when we had to go into Walmart, and I was talking to everybody like I would see somebody, you know, had a pretty dress, and I was like, oh my gosh, your dress is gorgeous, you know? Talking, communicating with people. Um, you know, somebody who you saw that they were having a rough dive, guy who was checking my receipt on the way. I see people who go up to these these older seniors who oh, I'm on my way there, right? And 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 they and they ask to see their receipt, and they want to be offended, offended that somebody wants to check their receipt because they went through the self checkout. Why are you? Why are you checking? Do you think I look like a thief? You know, I mean, they're offended from the moment before they even get there. They are offended. They're like looking at this old dude. Like, I wish a brother would, okay, you asked to see it. And then they want to give him a hard time. And I'm like, he's just sitting there, he, he's just looking at me. My receipt's out, and I'm like, hey, how you doing today? I said, you want to check my receipt? You want to check my receipt? Come on, you want to check it? And then I said to him, I got some steaks in there. I got some ribeyes in there. And he says, oh, and then he, he starts smiling, right? And he says, oh, I see that. And I said, we're going to be grilling out today. I said, y'all, come on over. And he started cackling. And my niece got the biggest kick out of that. Like, you know, Molly, you know, you just inviting people to dinner. And I'm like, well, I wish he would. He won't probably, but I wish he would. But for me, it was about... I'm okay with your job because that's what you get paid for. And if I'm not doing anything wrong, why am I going to get offended for you doing your job? Let me help you check my receipt. I am okay with what I've done. I'm not trying to get away with the extra 12 pack of soda underneath there that you may not have scanned purposely or not purposely, Jesus take the wheel, Jesus fix it, Jesus take the whole car. I'm not judging you, but I see all those TikToks and reels where people go, can you believe that they're, they're checking my order? Why are you so upset? If you haven't done anything wrong and they are doing their job, why are you upset? I mean, stop it. Why are you being a miserable somebody and you're making somebody's job harder? If you know you're okay and you scanned it all, even if you made a mistake, you're not going to be upset because a mistake's going to be something you didn't even know was there as a mistake. You know, I just have to, I just have to laugh sometimes. Why people have got to find, hey Christy, people have got to find the misery of what's going on with them in the moment, right? Like you're already loaded for beer. If you would load your 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 body, yourself, your mind, your attitude, load it with love. Load it with love for anybody you come in contact with because even when they want to be in a bad mood, you're going to catch them off guard. You got when they're like looking at you like, mm, you know, I deal, I told Chad, I deal, I, I told him, I said, you see these people at Bojangles, these people who work at this Bojangles, they're the most miserable human beings out there. They hate their job, Chad. I said, but when I go in, I just tell them how much I appreciate them. If they're, if they're, hmm, huh, and they are, he saw them, they're like, hmm, I'll be like, oh, do we get this and this, huh, huh, huh. They're miserable. They don't like their job. I still am just going to kill them with love. I'm going to kill them with kindness, right? Because I'm like, you're not going to steal my joy because I got too much joy and too much love here in this big six-foot body. You ain't stealing it, Cupcake. I am going to love you through it. And then when I leave, what you going to do? You gonna tell people how, how I irritate you because I'm always kind, because I'm always smiling, because I'm loving you through it, that I will not pick a fight with you over the fact that you did not, I know there's no drink in this order because I can't feel it, thank you, but I'm just gonna keep loving you through it, going, you sure? I only feel one in here. Yeah, it's only one. Till they finally listened and went, oh yeah, you do need one. Hey Donna, um, I'm telling you right now, 
It's so easy just to say, oh, I'm going to write this person off and I'm going to be a craphead about it and I'm going to not forgive you and I'm going to, I'm going to make you pay for the rest of your born life for something that in three years probably isn't going to amount to a hill of beans and you're going to look at yourself and say, what in the world is wrong with me? Why would I let something like that destroy my inner peace and, and go on with this it don't bother me I don't care I'll never want to be that I ain't gonna talk to that person I'm not gonna be nice I hate that establishment it does stop it because that requires so much energy it is bothering you and you know why it's bothering you because Jesus is telling you you need to get it right you he has more his better things for you get it right let it go Start leading with love instead of looking for the thing that people, you think that, I think there are people out here who live to see who can do it wrong. People read people's posts and they live to think, are they, are they talking about me? Is that me they're relating to? Are, are they saying that about me? And my whole deal is, if you are, and you're that caught up on it, and you haven't come to me directly to iron some wrinkle out that you may feel like we have, well, shame on you! Shame on you then, because I'm still loving you through it, and I'm not going to let it get me down. Because when you allow those things to take you, and, and they're still in your insides, you are being robbed for making a difference in somebody else's life. You are. And you can be in denial right now. You're going, Molly, you don't know what you're talking about. You honestly do not know what that person said, what that person did. You know, really? It doesn't matter? So that person can't make a mistake? So, so suddenly it's not okay to be the bigger person? So suddenly it's not okay to forgive somebody whether they think that they should be forgiven or not? It's not okay to... Forgive people for your own inner peace? It's not okay? Ah. Oh, I'm so glad when I learned that. It took me so long. I was that person who I was constipated, for lack of a better word, constipated with holding on to why I didn't understand why this person did that, why I was used by this person, why this person doesn't love. Oh my gosh. For all of you who are not an Avon rep and you're following me, let me, let me be clear. I have a group that's private that is just for Avon representatives with about 17,000 representatives in there from all over. There are ones from Canada, most of them from the U.S. Uh, when Australia had, had Avon, they were all in there. Okay, so for all over. But the ones who are the worst are the ones from the United States. Sorry, it's just the truth. Um, and they are so caught up with correcting this person and doing this and telling them they're doing something wrong. But above all, they're caught up with what they don't agree with me. And it's okay that they don't agree with me, but they got so caught up with disliking me because I'm like, look, I think that if this works for you, go for it. That's great. But please don't put down somebody else's idea because if that's working for them, success looks different the way they do it doesn't mean they can't be successful, right? I'm like, we're in here to celebrate no matter what. By the way, we're even celebrating the failures because when you fail, that's when you learn that there has to be another way to do it or you tweak the way that you're doing something now. So we celebrate that because when you don't quit, there is growth. When there, when there is no quitting, you will become better. Right? I got to tell you something. You know who taught me that from the very beginning and I could never see it? My Bible taught me that. Jesus. You think he wasn't spit at? You think people didn't want to kill him? You think people didn't talk behind his back? Do you think as a child that the other kids didn't bully him? Do you think that as a child, a human child, there were things, had to have been things he didn't want to do, right? He has taught me that when you keep going, you get the job done. Because his success was that he didn't give up knowing he had to go down that path and get to that cross and die on that cross and let people stick him, spit him, cuss him, hate on him. And he let them nail him to a cross. He did it. 
He did it even though everybody hated him and everybody turned on him, even his friends, even the people who were supposed to love him. There is no greater love than to give your life, but how about this for us, than to just forgive and show love. Show some love. Love people through their misery. That doesn't mean that you, you have to allow yourself to be in direct fire. Now, let, let's be honest, okay? That, that's not what that means. But people will, whether they want to observe, act like they're observing or not, they will learn through your example of how you handle things. And yes, you should. The Bible says that when somebody's wronged you, you should go to them and you should talk to them about it. You shouldn't go post these little things on Facebook that they probably know it's for them and you know it's for them and the 18 people you told know it's for them, but yet you've yet to go talk to them about it. I know I'm stepping on toes. I understand it because let me tell you, I step on my own toes with this stuff. Just love them through it and if they're important enough to you, Go talk to them so at least you feel like even if they're wrong, the forgiveness is there. The forgiveness is there. And by the way, again I say, it's for you. The reason I can say this is because, see, Jesus made that path a little bit wider for me. He didn't take it away from me. He didn't take the hurt away of somebody wronging me. He didn't hit that person with lightning like I may have wanted in the beginning, right? He didn't do that. But he made the path a little wider so I could see things a little differently. And he put some, some people and some messages into my life to say, Molly, you need to handle this differently. You need to learn how to love people, Molly. You need to understand that God isn't going to take all this hurt away from you. But you never have to walk through hurt again. You never have to walk through loss again alone. There's the key. Alone. I don't want you to have to walk alone. But I also don't want you to be the person that the only time you decide that God is good enough for you is when you're having problems. Because that's a real problem. I think that I have learned that every day that I wake up and I still have issues with my side, my side will hurt. Even now here, I'm going to be going on a year in October since the surgery. And um, the healing process has been long. But some days I will wake up and I will feel hardly anything. And I just, I'm thankful in those moments. Thank you, Lord. The reason I still hurt is because I'm still exercising. It's because I'm still bending, because I was cut in my core, because I am 59 years old, and because, and this story is, healing is a huge process as you get older, for sure, right? And some days I get up and I go, oh, I hate that my side is hurting today. You know, it will rain. It rained all day yesterday. My side will hurt, and I'll be like, all right, Lord, just get me through this. You know, that means that I need to go up and get some Biofreeze, put on my side, take a couple of Advil or some Tylenol, and get through my day and think back that a year ago I had a cancerous mass on my kidney, and it's not there anymore because divine intervention found that bugger, and I am here with you to tell you that love is better. And adversity is going to teach you things in this life. Struggles in business are going to teach you things in life. Struggles with family or why is my kid this way or why is my kid that way is going to teach you. <clears throat> Struggles with, with your spouse are going to teach you. Struggles with friends. You don't have to run to alcohol and drugs and again, look, this is not me being against, hold on, don't, don't, you go ahead and judge me, you go ahead, Jesus, fix it. It's not what I'm saying. There's a complete difference in having a drink and letting, a, letting drinks numb you. Overuse of medication, not getting your body in a place it needs to be so you don't need that medication. 
There is something much bigger than you and I that will help get you through things in time if you hold on to it, and that is God. But in the meantime, you know what he's given you? He's giving you Molly Stone Bib and other people a good cup of coffee, devotions. He's given us humor, the things that we laugh about. Y'all see me. Look, I'm putting stuff out there. Yeah, everybody goes, oh no, Molly done found Jesus. Well, to be clear, I didn't find Jesus. Jesus found me, okay? But they think I'm not me. Do you not understand? Jesus uses me. He uses my cracked up humor, the fact that I will laugh at myself, the fact that he will use me in my company, the way I love things and the way that I'm going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. God said, I see who you are. I see that hot mess. And Molly, you have been chosen. I am going to use you if you will let me. He does not, he does not make me. He says, if you choose to be used, I will use you to show that I am the better way. And I'm here to tell you. It's the truth. So far, hand to heaven, so far, it's the better way. So for those of you who are walking this journey with me on Tuesdays and every other day that I'm on here, thank you. Thank you for letting me feel like I am not alone. Thank you for letting me feel like maybe I can share an hour in your morning on Tuesdays and that you can take that with you through the rest of the week. And it may help you in some way or maybe help you find a new walk with God. And maybe it will help you look at God differently because too many people let bad Christians and bad churches rob them of an awesome God. Now, people are the church and sometimes those people aren't good for you. It's not all of them. Let's be clear. It's not. But when you find a church that wants to judge you or change you, I would suggest that you walk away from it. That's just my suggestion because I believe that when Jesus moves you to change something, that is when you change it. When you are bothered here in your heart and in your gut that you know there's something you need to get right, something you need to change, you, you change it. Don't you let man or some pastor sitting up on the pulpit telling you what you, he's going to tell you how to love. He's going to tell you how to find your way to heaven. He should be. He should be loving you through everything bad you've ever done in your life and not judging you. And if you have a tattoo, if you have a piercing, if you are, if you have long hair as a man, if, if, if your, if your skirts may be a little bit short, if you seems like you are a person that they always judge, you know what? Don't listen to them. Cut it off. Cut it off. Stop it. You do you through Christ. That's who you do you through. You be your best you, but when you bring Jesus into it, he is going to tell you. He's going to show you what's good and what's not good. And I could give you example after example, but I won't today because we've almost been on here for my time limit. But I need you to know you are not a lost cause. And don't you ever let a person who comes to you and claim that they are of God tell you that Jesus can't use you where you're at. Yes, he can. And if you don't know that, you haven't followed my story close enough for sure. Yes, he can. Because everything that's remarkable that makes you different or you maybe you don't like about yourself, Jesus can use it. You know what that tells me? The extra 50 pounds I'm trying to take off right now as I'm trying to lose it, we're all going to be able to embrace it. Every little bit of the chin, every bit of the floppiness, every time I come on here with messy hair and no makeup, it's going to show you that Jesus can use me too. 
in all my imperfections, in all the ways I've slipped and fallen. Avon sisters, all the ways that I've lost title, that my sales haven't been as great, that my team hasn't performed like it should. The real, the real story there is we're still here and we're not done. And we show what can be done when you keep at it. Because there's a love in our heart for something that can touch a whole lot of people. So be your best you. Quit letting those people judge you. And wait for God to widen your path. And let him walk beside you. And quit pushing him off the path. Give him a chance. Invite him into your life. And let him show you what being with him can really do for you. That's what I want you to know. Okay? So I'm going to pray for you right now. Okay? I'm going to pray for you right now. And um, I need you to know that there is a reason that old hymn that I grew up in church listening to. There's a reason that it was written. Just as I am. Just as I am. You know what's so funny? I went to churches who said just as I am. But you know what? They didn't believe it. Because when you walked in, they tried to change you. Not change your heart. They tried to change you, right? They would sing that song, but they didn't really listen to it. Because Jesus says, just as you are right now, quit trying to fix everything before you come to him. He wants you and everything you got. The extra weight. The fact that you feel like you're a hot mess. The fact that you've made all these mistakes in life. He doesn't care. He wants you, but what he wants more is for you to want him, okay? So so let's pray, and you're going to get on with your day, and for my Avon sisters, I'll be with you today, when tonight when I get done with my team meeting, probably be about 8.30 or so, but we will, um, we're going to talk some Avon, and we're going to talk about fourth quarter, okay? Let's all pray together. Dear God. We thank you so much, God, for all you've done for us. We, we praise you, God, for the way that you sent your son to die on the cross for us. Lord, the fact that no matter what he went through in life, and we know, Lord, what he must have gone through in life as a human here, people turning on him, and Lord, he still chose love. He still chose love, and he chose to let them put him on that cross but most importantly, Lord, after he died, he rose again the third day. And because of that, he covered our sins. He ripped the veil from that temple. And there was no need to go through man anymore. We could go directly to you, Lord, with our sins, with our troubles, with our happy times, our sad times, our funny times, our anxious times. And I can't thank you enough for that, Lord. Lord, I pray that anybody who watches this now or on YouTube, that they will realize that you are real and that you are the only real God out there. And that if they will, they will just give you a chance and accept you into their heart and say, you know, I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose the third day. And I believe that when this life comes to an end, I want to spend eternity with him and all my loved ones in heaven. That I don't want to go through life alone. I want him to walk through life with me. Lord, if they do that, we know that they then are a child of God. And that they're still going to make mistakes, God. I think, God, I just think sometimes that's what we forget. That we think that when we accept you, we ain't never going to do wrong no more. And you showed me that I'm still going to get it wrong every single day. But you are there to walk me through the journey and help me get it right time after time. God, if there's anybody here with somebody sick, if there's anybody here whose heart is sick, anybody here with, with a loss in their life, Lord, they don't know how they're going to get through missing that person, and, and that's so normal. God, help them not to feel alone. Show them that we are all here for them. And that you will love them through it and we will love them through it. God, anybody who, who has cancer, any disease, any sickness, who has been through it, who has had the power of healing, has the power of going through to find healing. God, and sometimes healing 
whether we like it or not, is in the process of calling somebody home to be with you, and it hurts so bad when that happens, but sometimes, Lord, it's all the body can, can do. Help us through all those times, God. Help us to love one another. Help us to know that this life, one day at a time, is a blessing, and that when we waste it being angry, God, when we waste it, we waste it being a craphead, Lord. You know how I can be a craphead to my husband, to my family, to people in general. Thank you for forgiving me and moving in me to stop it. Because you speak to me every day about things I need to change. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for giving me the courage to do this. God, you know the friends I've lost over this. I guess, God, they really weren't friends. That's what I think you would tell me. Molly, they were friends for a season. They weren't for you now. I get it, God, but it still hurts. So thank you for giving me the bravery to embrace the people who embrace me, but above all, to embrace the people who don't want to embrace me. Help me to keep that love in my life and give others that love, Lord. That they can love their families, their friends, and people who are rude to them. Help them to understand. To smile. Don't lash back. Smile. And show them something different than they normally experience. Help keep us safe, Lord. All my Avon sisters, direct sales people. God, help their businesses. Help them to grow. Help them to work hard, God. Bless their businesses. Bless my business, God. You know the prayers that we have on that. And for all people out there who have their own struggles, help them to communicate with you, God, and to give it to you. And then watch for your direction as to what they should do next. We thank you, God, for life. We thank you for the way that you love us, Lord. And we thank you today for this last hour. In Jesus' name, amen. So there you go. Go forth and have a great day. Go forth and love people. Go forth and love God and wait for God to widen that path for you. Okay? That's what I'd say. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.